Okay, let's go ahead and get started. All right, so my name is Emily Hardin. I'm going to be moderating this panel today about Teclahoma, an organization I'm actually a part of. So I am the community manager for Teclahoma. Um, I have these lovely panelists with me. Um, would you mind telling me about yourself and you guys can start from Alex and work your way down. My name's Alex Ayo. Um, I currently work for Bison Technologies. I moved to Oklahoma City six years ago. Um, and been running ever since. Uh, I got acquainted with Techwahoma in 2017. Um, and joined uh, Techwahoma. I currently I was working in the pharmaceutical industry at the time, and uh, I was able to transition in large part, I think, uh, due to the connections, the network, and the knowledge I gained. You know, being involved with. Cool. And you're a board member. And I'm a board member, yes. <laughs> <laughs> We're all our board members. Yes. That's true. <laughs> um, hi, I'm Kendall Wirtz. I'm the president of Techlahoma. Um, I'm also a ML ops engineer for a small company called Inudo. Uh, and I, before that, I was a chemical engineer for 10 years. And Techlahoma is also a big part of why I moved from chemical engineering to to, to tech, where I'm now full stack engineer. And she's also the president. Madam president. I said that. She did say, <laughs> oh, sorry. I think she got nine. My name is Bray. All right. OK, thank you. Um, <laughs> hi, everyone. My name is Sion, uh, last name Kim. I am treasurer of Tech Hall. I My daytime job is a privacy security engineer at Mozilla, working on a product called Relay, which is an email masking uh, service. And the way I got to learn about Teclahoma was I was looking for a way to kind of improve my existing skill sets. And I heard about Tulsa Web Devs here in Tulsa. And then I got to meet some cool people at Code for Tulsa. And then I just stayed around. And now I'm a board member. I don't know how, but I'm a board member. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. He said yes to me. <laughs> <laughs> um, I said yes to Diana, yes. Yes, it's always, it's always my fault. So I'm Diana Barnes. Um, Code for Tulsa Leadership, uh, Vice President of Techlahoma Foundation. My day job, I'm a project and program manager for the University of Oklahoma's Innovation Hub. Um, I got involved with Techlahoma back uh, very beginning of 2016, 2017, I forget, I think it's 2016, um, when I had been teaching myself web, de web development, wanting to get into a new career, something that paid better than having my own series of businesses that was way too much work. I wanted to go back into the work industry again um, and ended up finding out that I love project management more than dev work. So that's fine for now. Perfect. All right. Um, well, I think you all touched on it a little bit, um, but can one of you kind of explain the structure of Teclahoma just for those who aren't aware? Well, maybe <laughs> um, the structure. So, uh, is there a structure? There, there is a structure. <laughs> there, there, <laughs> there's a core structure. There is yeah. a structure that we try to maintain. Um, there's, a, there's a board. There's an 11 member board with four officers. Um, and then under that are committees that run our various programs, or they run basically support services for those programs. So, um, our programs are, um, uh, what chairs? Not thinking of words right now. Conferences. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's the word I was looking for. <laughs> so conferences. <laughs> yeah, conferences, workshops, uh, monthly meetups, um, our civic tech organization. Um, we've got a Slack channel where we've got five thousand members. A lot. Yeah. We've got a lot of members that cover the entire state. Um, Oh my goodness. We do a lot. <laughs> right. So we have regular networking yeah. events where we could have anywhere from 30 to 400 people show up. <laughs> it's, it's, it's kind of crazy. Yeah. And our, our Slack group is especially really well organized too. Um, we have a very active jobs board, uh, jobs channel, and we're about to have a jobs board on our website. Um, and a lot of people, I think, find good connections here for not just jobs, but to expand their job skills. So. Yeah, there's various many topics on um, Slack 
anything from any kind of technology you want to learn about, networking, uh, job advice, it's all there. Yeah. And it's all thanks to our volunteers. So why do you think Techlahoma is needed? Why is that an organization that you think uh, is beneficial to the state of Oklahoma? Well, I think it brings community uh, a chance for people to meet on a neutral ground, I'd like to say. Um, you know, we're volunteer run, so there's I would say minimal conflict of interest. It's not like we're being run by recruiters. Uh, people volunteer their time uh, to, you know, teach, uh, to advance uh, the community uh, and, and to network as well, to meet each other. So um, I think it's definitely needed um, for Oklahoma and for other states too. Um, as technology keeps dominating our lives, uh, I think uh, organizations like Tech Oklahoma kind of, uh, even if you don't want a, a career in tech, I think it's also important just to know what tech is about. Yeah, I think I would like have a, I liked what you said, especially like I think Techlahoma is a community. It's a community for people of all ranges and technical skills. Like um, people who don't know anything about technology is welcome here. And we really encourage you to join us in the other things that's going on, the, the programs that we're running. Um, it's a great place to connect with people who are like-minded or are there to help you expand on your skill sets. Um, it's like, why, why would we not want a technology-oriented community? Um, yeah. <laughs> that's like the things that we can do when we have a, a place to discuss ideas, to share knowledge. It's like you grow from that a lot. And it's, I can't think of a community without a community. <laughs> and I was going to add, too, that um, a lot of people don't know this, but and even though Techlahoma is statewide, Tulsa itself has the highest rate of volunteerism per capita in the in the entire country, and it's known as the most generous city in the country and maybe even worldwide. Um, volunteering is in the culture in this state. Helping each other out is in the culture in this state. Um, there's a very, of course, everybody thinks of libertarianism here. Um, there's the idea of you don't rely on other people to help you out. You're going to do it yourself. You're going to take care of your community yourself. And we're not going to wait on anybody to come in and do things. Um, so we try to all step in. And if we see that there's a need for something, we're going to go in and just do it ourselves. So, so you kind of touched on this too, um, about being a volunteer run organization. So until last year, uh, when you guys hired me part time, um, you had no... Uh, paid employees. It was entirely volunteer run. And still, I'm only a contractor. Um, so I'm not uh, actually even an employee, right? So it's an entirely volunteer run organization. Um, how do you manage that? How do you keep the volunteers interested and intrigued in this uh, community? Um, we start out by understanding that volunteers have burnouts too. <laughs> I think, I think like us all being in the board started out with us volunteering at our own respective areas and like coming into the board, which is also volunteer duty. It's like, we, we had a really good understanding that if we're asked for too much, if we do too much and it kind of breaks the balance of our livelihood, then we have the opportunity to step back a little bit because it is a volunteer run thing. Um, I, like understanding that we need to be conscious of that and appreciate our volunteers respectively and being able to give them the opportunity to say no and tell them you should say no if you're having a hard time <laughs> pulling yourself too much for it. Because um, I think an important part of like this being a volunteer led group. Um, anyone else want to chime yeah. in? I was going to say, in, in addition to that, yeah, we, we try very hard to even remind people don't go beyond your capacity. Uh, communicate when things are getting too hard. Um, I am famous for saying yes to all the things, and like Kendall and Sayon are like, no, you can't say yes to that. You've got too much on your plate. <laughs> so we watch out for each other. Um, 
And then we also have a lot of different opportunities available. If you want to be, if your comfort level is just hanging out in Slack and you want to help moderate and answer questions or help uh, make sure that the code of conduct isn't violated or anything, you can do that. We've got like Doji and Ryan who are now helping us with the streaming for this conference itself. Uh, if streaming is something they're interested in, they can do just that. Um, I like organizing events, so I do a lot of that. Um, if someone wants to just code on a project, we've got projects that we want to do, and so we can do just that. So there are literally probably hundreds of opportunities available that you could go do. So if you get bored with one thing, like I'm getting burned out right now with organizing, especially after this conference and <laughs> five years of being on a working board. So I plan on stepping back a little bit. Um, but then that'll give me other things that I can still remain in the organization and still be super involved, but pass off the things that have been burning me out. I also think we support volunteers by telling them yes. Like, yeah. we try to avoid, I mean, I try to avoid politicizing anything. Mm -hmm. um, not, not U.S. politics, but just like politics within the organization. Like, I like to try and remove barriers for folks. Um, like, if we had, if we had a group interested in joining as a user group in the middle of the year last year, which is not normal. Normally there's a process at the end of the year, but you know, we try to get them in. Someone uh, wanted to create a new conference a few years ago and we were like, we were like, give us a budget and yes, go for it. Like it, like we try and say yes, if it fits the mission, if it can be paid for in some way, if we have money for it or they can find money for it, then people are like, yes, do it. That sounds great. I, yeah, like I, what I'm hearing a lot is really like we like to support whatever range of people who wants to volunteer, right? People who wants to go from one thing to another or people who wants to come in and leave, who wants to start something new entirely, like mm -hmm. are even though we weren't doing a good job before talking about it, well, we have good infrastructure in place to support that. And I think it helps the volunteers keep their interest. Um, like, I feel like almost we don't do an enough job of thanking our volunteers, but we do a pretty good job of keeping them interested in what we are trying to offer. And I think the volunteers feel or see that. So thank you, volunteers. <laughs> <laughs> and I think it's all about giving people the opportunity to contribute how they want to contribute. Yeah. Um, whether that's a small thing or, or a larger, or yeah. larger thing. Um, but just channeling those energies and that goodwill into something productive. I think that we're very good at that. Okay. Um, so I've heard a lot about wonderful things. What about some of the biggest hurdles you've had, um, struggles with Techlahoma? Uh, keeping in mind that uh, pretend that I am not a struggle ever and that I say everything perfectly. <laughs> you are never a struggle, Emily. Thank and you're you really are amazing. Because the number one struggle in my book is volunteer burnout. Yes. Um, we've lost tens of board members and and volunteers. Have possibly hundreds of volunteers, I'm not no. sure, no. to burnout because it, it was just too much. And so that's something that we really try to focus on, especially in the last couple of years, is to not let anyone or, or to provide support so that people don't feel like they're on their own. And if, if they don't do this, then no one's going to do it. And this opportunity will be flushed down the drain. Like I don't want people to think that way. So. The other, one of the other struggles I feel like we have is um, relations with like corporations mm -hmm. in the state. We do really well with like locally independent owned businesses and organizations, but when you get into oil and gas and banking and things like that, um, they have no idea we exist. Yeah, we need to be better at elbow rubbing. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, 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 I do. Yeah. So one of that problem is that we are, we are too, like, helpful. Like, I think sometimes we need to leverage that sometimes our helpfulness can be in terms of like the other company or other group like sponsoring us for certain things, but we're already willing to like do everything for them without them asking, right? Yeah. So like sometimes you're like, I, I don't know if this is a good way of saying it, but like we are too helpful to people. And sometimes that gives us the lack of opportunity to, for us to be 
more leverage in that we are a 5,000 plus member, you know, organization spreading out from Oklahoma, like people outside of Oklahoma know us for a reputation we have in like conferences that we run or like the Code for Tulsa work that, you know, we've done or, you know, really, really cool things, but we're already willing to just help them. Yeah, so why would I pay for that when you're doing it for free? free. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so what I'm hearing um, a couple of times is just um, having struggling to say no, both as an individual and as an organization. Yeah. Um, what are you doing to try to fight that? What are you doing to be able to say no? I have one. <laughs> <laughs> um, so we kind of put a structure to it. Um, we like Thankfully, with having Emily, with having new board members who you know, have different specialties, like we are realizing that there is a need to have a job support where people can reliably say that this, this person advertising for this job is a good company to work for um, or is a company that you know, we're willing to have on our Slack channel to advertise for. Um, that's another one. Um, like a fundraising committee does an amazing job on trying to figure out, you know, where is a place where we should help out and where is a place where we can balance out the helping out with, you know, having a steady like income for us to then support our local user groups and volunteers for. Um, so we put infrastructures in place um, with thanks to lots of really good volunteers and our board members who are willing to put in the time to um, put those into processes. Uh, so that's a one way of saying, not a no, but like here's an other way we can accomplish this. Yeah. And I think we just bring up things to the community and see, you know, where, everyone, all the interested groups can meet, and if, if ideas are viable or not. Um, it may be the case that we may have a really good idea that we want to put forth, but maybe the economics or the, the volunteerism isn't there, so we just have to basically put it in a public forum and, and see what other people's ideas are, and listen to them, and see if it's something that we can actually undertake. Yeah, our like way of saying no is not a no. It's like, <laughs> we can't help you with what you are wanting, but we can share the network of resources that we have. And that is like, we can advertise it on our Slack channels for you, or we can give you a connection that we know that we have worked with. Because Techlahoma has been existent for how many years? Uh, that was going to be my pop quiz question. No! Oh, yeah. oh, see, I already failed that question. <laughs> 2014, so seven years. The community's been 2014. Around longer than that, but that's yeah. when it officially incorporated. Yep, 501c. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so uh, there were multiple user groups around the state, and they kind of decided to combine forces and create Techlahoma, and that uh, happened in 2014. Um, we have some comments in the chat um, about thanking Techlahoma for allowing people to put in pull requests, um, even if their experience isn't uh, strong or their English might not be exactly correct. Um, we've had a lot of volunteers that help us uh, all around the country and around the world, even though they're not in, Tecla in Oklahoma, they can still help Techlahoma. Um, so that's pretty cool. Um, we also had a question. Oh, please. I was going to say that's a good point because we are not just known here in Oklahoma. We are, we do have people who attend from all across the world, especially at our conferences and things like that. So we're, we're welcoming to anyone, not just Oklahoma. Definitely. Um, I did get a specific question uh, from an audience member about telling us some specific ways to try to help volunteers avoid burnout. Um, so some examples. I think burnout is a problem we always have. Um, every organization I've been a part of has had volunteer burnout. Um, I can think of a few ways, but uh, if you guys can give some ex specific examples, that'd be great. First way is hire Emily. <laughs> <laughs> I will work for $10 million. <laughs> Let, let me sustain that with like sub substantiate that with some things like having someone who is paid um, yes. to help actually take care of volunteers is really nice yeah. because we get burnout <laughs> as volunteers um, and someone who is being uh, compensated for their job, which they should always um, can make sure that the volunteers are also being compensated for their volunteerism. Mm -hmm. Right. So like 
um, we could do a better job of saying thank you. But we also get burnt out at not just thank yous, but also all the other things of maintaining their tech mm-hmm. And we lose out that sometimes we need to pay attention to our volunteers more. And Emily does a good job of like saying like, hey, I'm seeing that a lot of volunteers, yes, you should do a hair flip, a bigger <laughs> one. Um, like letting us know that we are giving enough attention to the volunteers and we need to do more to support them, right? Um, so having like a third party who can, I wouldn't say, sorry, not third party, but someone who can take a step back and look at it in a bigger picture and come back in and say like, hey, we need to help them with the burnout. Um, I was going to mention um, one thing that I try to do, and I know this was mentioned in the previous panel discussion about people ghosting when they feel mm-hmm. uh, guilt or overwhelmed and that they don't want to let people down. When you notice, when, actually, when I notice that somebody is ghosting, I make a point to reach out to them and say, hey, it's okay. If you were burned out, if you were overwhelmed, come talk to me. I am a safe person to talk to. You will have zero judgment. I will probably understand exactly where you're coming from because I have experienced all the things. Um, And let them know it's okay. And when you feel comfortable, come back. We are going to be here. We will be happy to help you, have you. It doesn't matter what capacity you're in or what capacity you have. We will take you. Even if you just show up once a year to an event, we'll take you. If you want to show up to all the things, we will take you. And you don't need to worry about um, being shunned or guilt tripped or anything because you can't give what you need. And I try to seek those people out and let them know that. Um, out of curiosity, is this a question coming from an organization dealing with volunteer burnouts or volunteers dealing with burnouts that would oh, like yeah. support from? I'm not sure, uh, but I'd love to hear the opposite answer too. I guess yeah. not opposite, but you know, uh, both the pa- like, the question you said both. Burning out, just stop. Like, well, you're a volunteer. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, what was it? Um, wait, 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 wait. Um, speak, speak up. up. Be, like, build, build a barrier for yourself. Like, what? Draw a line somewhere. Like, you can't say yes to everything. You can't. There's only a finite amount of time mm-hmm. in our lives. You know, we sleep eight hours a day. We commute. We have to make food. We have to hang out with our loved ones. So it's okay not to have time, you know, occasionally. And if you do feel burned out, let other people know. Maybe someone else can step up that has more availability. Um, Try to find others in the community, someone who you could delegate to what you've done before. Use it maybe as a teaching opportunity to teach someone else. Like, hey, you know, I used to help the streams. This is how you, Mm -hmm. you know, edit videos or whatever duty you have that you feel you can't do anymore, it's okay to step back. Just let other people know, hey, I'm having difficulty with this. Yeah. I can't do this right now. Uh, and try to find other people who may have that availability and can step up in your place. Yeah, it's, and riffing off of that, that's a great opportunity for mentoring. Um, I have often found any time that I am burned out and I say, hey, I really need some help. I can't handle this anymore. Um, who is interested in learning more about what I've been doing. I almost, I almost always have somebody who's like, yeah, I'm kind of interested. I'm I'm happy to hear more. And then I let them know you're not going to be alone doing this. I'm happy to guide you through it so that you don't feel like you have to figure it all out yourself. And I look at it as a mentoring opportunity. Right. Yeah. The most important thing is communicate to the people around you and the organization that you are feeling a burnout. Um, and hopefully the people that you're communicating to can help you with, you know, saying no, right, as a first step. And then if you feel comfortable, you know, mentoring and helping out modern people who can take up your job and also help them expand on their skills too, right? Yeah. Um, but communicating, like, please, 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 please don't go stuff. Yeah. Um, I want to know, like, whether or not you're not doing well or doing well so that we can, like, accordingly do things to you to help. Um, so if you don't tell us and you no longer are involved with us, we would feel bad that we lost you. And we, we do think about all the people who no longer are with us because they were so valuable to us. There are so many things that we could learn from them. Yeah. And, and it, it really does break our hearts to lose, to lose our volunteers. And ghosting is hard because sometimes you're like, are, are they okay? Like, yeah, like, that's the thing that I feel like, about. It's like, like is something they, wrong? Like, yeah. Is something happening? Yeah. Do we need to, yeah. On a well, human you know, level. Right, yeah. exactly. And ultimately, we're here to, you know, 
help the community. And if the community and that is the volunteers are hurting, then we're not doing a good job, right? Yeah. So, and the way you can help us do a good job is you tell us that you are, you know, having a hard time and we'll do our best to help you. Yeah. But, and I don't, how do you deal with guilt? Of not saying no? Yeah. Like, cause, cause that's the, like, cause you can, I can say, just stop doing what you're doing. But the problem <laughs> Like the reason you don't stop is because you feel guilty because I mean, there's probably a lot of reasons, but my big reason was, Oh, if I don't do this, if I'm not here, then what's going to happen. Mm-hmm. And you just, you have to put things in place to take care of that. And how you, and the guilt, you just have to get over it. Yeah. I, guess. Yeah, I think the, 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 <laughs> mentoring how I, the guilt. <laughs> looking, looking at it as mentoring and helping is what helps me with my guilt, mm-hmm. letting them know that I'll still be here. I yeah. just, I need to just take a break from the actions that I've been doing. Right. I've been to take care of my personal he- mental health and relax and recuperate. Um, that's how I, at least how I deal with it. So I want to take this a different approach. Okay. Um, mm-hmm. I don't want to focus on the guilt because I, I think the guilt is what makes it hard to say no. And so you shouldn't pay attention to the guilt. You know what I mean? Oh, it's yes. like, you know, you did a good job volunteering. You helped people out. You've supported an infrastructure. You've supported mm-hmm. an organization and a community. You should be happy with that. And if that's the extent that you can help, you still did a good job. And as a result, because you did an amazing job, you should be empowered to say no, right? Yeah. It's, not, it's not the guilt of not doing a good job that should tell you you should say no. It should be the the proud the empowered you know you that's like i made a difference but i can continue to do that because i'm trying to focus on other things to say no right Mm -hmm. i want this to be a place of positivity to say no and not like i feel bad that i'm not doing a good job so i'm gonna say no you know what i mean Mm -hmm. like if you if you're reminded that you did a good job then you can be like i did a good job but i don't have to continue doing that because i'm only a volunteer yeah right made me think too that with this being a place of volunteering we have the expectation of having no expectations of our volunteers. Yeah. Yeah. We do not expect them to, to do all of the things. Um, if they say that they'll do something and it doesn't happen, you know what? It's okay. It's all going to work out. It's all fine. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and we're like, mm-hmm. it's fine. It's fine. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, and, no. We'll make, make sure that it's uh, helped or supported. Yeah. And we make sure this is a judge-free zone. Yeah. 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 Some, Building like Go ahead, Al. This really in structure. It's like, well, you might not be able to volunteer, and that's okay. Let's see if we can find someone else that can fill that role, if at all possible. Yeah. And it, and it becomes a mentoring opportunity as well. Something I found helpful within Tecloma is the health channel. Um, so we have that channel completely dedicated to people's health. Uh, there's like a weekly reminder uh, poll that pops up that asks how people are doing. Um, And it even allows for people to mark that they're not doing okay and they'd like someone to reach out. Um, Having that ability and um, feeling comfortable enough as a member of the team to be able to mark how you're feeling that week uh, makes me feel really comfortable um, on a personal note. Uh, We are getting tons of questions. Um, I'm going to read this one. (laughs) I'm going to read this one verbatim. (laughs) I'm going to read this one verbatim because I want to make sure every word gets heard. Um, Related to burnout and limited capacity, I'd be interested to know how volunteers think about where to best focus their efforts and how Techlahoma thinks about best matching volunteers to opportunities. There are so many issues out there and projects worth doing. As someone looking to volunteer and be involved in civic tech, sometimes I struggle with getting excited about every shiny new project or opportunity to learn, which can lead to burnout on the flip side. Um, So on the project management side of things, I try to look at what are the tasks that need to be done, what is most important, and I've got those listed. And then I also try to sit down with each individual and be like, what would you really like to work on? And great if there's a perfect fit between those two things. Um, If there's not, then there's plenty of other things that are less urgent that can still be done. So there's almost always, so using Quartbot as an example, um, (laughs) 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 Uh, uh, can you explain Quartbot first? 
Oh, Sam. Okay, yeah. Sam. yeah. I, I had to open that can of worms, didn't I? <laughs> <laughs> Cries a little bit, a lot. Um, court bot is a, a text reminder or a, a message from bot that reminds people of court dates coming up. Um, so it started in um, Alaska. And Atlanta. In Atlanta? Atlanta. And, and then Atlanta. We, we took, yeah, and then we took inspiration from Anchorage, okay. the JavaScript project, and then we took it as a Python project. And then I took it and evolved it a little bit to a Lex and Lambda and a Python service project. Um, and it's the idea is that a lot of people who miss court dates have snowballing of fines, which results into many of these people being thrown into jail. Um, and also there's been studies that if you are having your like people who care about you involved in the, the reminder to go to court, you are more likely to go to court, which means the snowballing of the, the fines will decrease as well. It's also really helpful to the government because the government does not need to put in resources to get the fines that they are hoping to get paid. Um, so like overall, it's just a really good service to help people get to court and perfect. Small problems small. Okay, and I got, I re I re okay. Re okay, perfect. Um, so basically I've had people who have come and said, okay, we want to get involved with Fortbot, what do we need to do? And we have found that the biggest issue has been trying to communicate clearly what like other brigades need to do. And so we've, had, we've got a few people who are helping us out right now, identifying and clarifying that information. Um, I've had some people who have come and said, I like doing graphic design, I like doing outreach. And so we're getting them connected with uh, creating some uh, marketing materials and contacting nonprofits that we can partner with, things like that. Um, I've got another friend who is a professional writer and she's enjoys some technical writing. So I, she and I are going to be working on um, the Courtbot playbook, um, different things like that. But I always try to have at least a list of a bunch of different things that need to be done, have them prioritized by what's more important, most important, and then try to fit those puzzle pieces together as best I can. So if you're an organizer, if you're not, if you're the organizer who is organizing the, how do you match the volunteers with the right project? Um, number one is to please organize your priorities because it's hard for you to, you know, recommend people things if you don't have those things organized ahead of time and you're like in dire need of making sure certain things are done. Um, other thing for me as an engineer, um, like for, for me as an engineer, it's a little bit different. Um, if I have an engineer starting to contribute, it's really like, where do they want to learn? Like, do they want to be more project leaning engineer? Do they want to be going into a new framework or a new language? And that's what they want to do. And then based on that, I can recommend things. Um, we, I, I think we try to focus on what does the volunteer want to do first? Yeah. Um, and that's, I think, how we get a happy matching is that it's less on, you know, what do we need to get done? Because... The what need what do you need to get done can be get done by us who started the problems. Yeah. <laughs> um, but also like what we really want to do is we want to foster volunteers to feel empowered to take more responsibilities. Like I don't want to give the responsibility to the volunteer until they're ready for it. And the way I do that is the carrot is what do you want to do? You know, let's make you feel empowered on wanting to do what you want to do done. And then we can give you more responsibilities as you feel more comfortable. Yeah, and then like on hack nights, sometimes we'll have different opportunities. Like this past hack night, um, we had brigade swag that needed to be stuffed, and then we had court bot. And so we asked people, we're like, which room do you want to go to? Do you want to go learn more about court bot and see how you can get plugged in there? Or do you want to come help stuff swag packages that we can send out to attendees of this conference? Yeah. So I'm trying to give them options like that as well, even on meetup nights. And we should pass it off to the Tecklahoma site too. <laughs> So we keep talking about oh, yeah, well, I, well, I was going to say that as a, as a, from a volunteer standpoint, what I tell myself is that I'm in charge of one thing that happens to be the whole organization. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm in charge of one thing, so I don't let myself be in charge mm. of anything else. I'm not yeah. in charge of Tulsa Web Devs. I'm not in charge of Code Controls. I'm not in charge of the workshops mm. committee. I'm not in charge of the fundraising campaigns. I'm in charge of the one thing. I can help out with the other things if I'm needed, but someone else is in charge of that, and that's their job. And though it may be tempting for me to peek in and poke, and sometimes I might do that, um, I I try not to. That's that's where I hold myself back. I have the one thing. I will help out on the other thing. So. Um. So 
give your volunteers ownership organiz organizations yes. organizers delegate. like yeah like not just delegate because they're you know sharing their time with you but have them have ownership of the problem that they're volunteering for and then i think it goes back to it will help them feel more empowered to participate and continue to volunteer and they feel like they're making an impact on right because this is their problem it's not our problem if you if you they, if they think it's theirs they'll probably prioritize it too what do you think some of the biggest impacts Techlahoma has had in its community? Like, what, what do you think some of those big impacts are? Uh, I can speak for that for me personally. I think um, developing a network of, of people who I can rely on for question, technical questions, career advice uh, has been hugely impactful. Um, it's what allowed me to transition from pharmaceuticals to technology and um, it's that connection, I think, um, with like-minded individuals who want to make an impact in their community, um, which, yeah, I find that invaluable. So. And we've had a lot of, we've created a, new, a lot of new developers. I know that for sure. I also know for sure we've had a lot of folks through connections they found in Tecklahoma get better jobs, yep. get remote jobs, which in Oklahoma is huge, a remote job usually pays a lot more than a local job in Oklahoma. Yeah, if you're hearing it from Oklahoma, you should be hearing it before. <laughs> Please. Uh, I, I would also say that um, having a community as a base place gives you an opportunity to do more. Like, I think when the pandemic hit and we had to switch all our, like, workshops or, like, um, our user groups meeting into virtual space, like, we had an infrastructure, Dozy and Ryan, who was helping us um, make this be a pain, less, less painful process. Um, and like, we also had specific channels that popped up. Like one of them that I was in was about a fiction because <laughs> it's in the middle of the pandemic. People don't know if they're gonna have a steady income and like we could share resources about, you know, this is, you can go over here to get um, rental assistance, right? So like one of the biggest impact I feel like Temple Home with it was because we had a community, we could foster even more help between people. Mm -hmm. And I can see that in a lot of like Slack channels. Yeah. I say Slack channels because we still haven't had a lot of physical meetings yet. Not so much face-to-face. -face. No. We're working on it. But the positivity yeah. was there in the Slack channels. Definitely. I, I can personally say like Techlahoma has affected me because I attended a meetup and met Diana and then Diana encouraged me to apply for my position with Techlahoma. Yeah. So, <laughs> uh, so that's a pretty good impact for me personally. Um, why do you think Techlahoma is so successful? Oh, are we successful? Can we start there? <laughs> yes, we're definitely. Well, there's no other organization like Techlahoma in existence, right? Um, because it, that. okay, I, I'm not I'm that I've heard of, that I've heard of in I'm other states. Of I've done some research yeah. myself. Uh, okay. I haven't, yeah. I haven't found any similar organization um, that does across the state um, that has all the meetups and user groups we have, all the conferences, all the volunteers um, in a tech-based organization. So why, what do you think helped Techlahoma to get to this spot? Volunteers. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Going back to what I said earlier about the culture in the state, of the Oklahoma Strong, we are going to do it ourselves. We're not going to rely on anybody else to do it. Um, the high rate of volunteerism and caring about our neighbors and caring for each other and things like that. This is that's what made me fall in love with this state. I mean, I know it get, the state gets a lot of flack, but they're honestly the most amazing people I've ever met in my entire life have been here. So for all the crap there is, there's just as much amazing stuff about it. So the other thing with that is we don't give up. Like, it's like, we've gone through our bouts of burnouts. Um, board members have gone through bouts of burnouts, but that didn't, that, that wasn't a place of giving up. It was more like a place of, I'm making room for even bigger and better things. Um, it's like, I feel like every time I meet a board member and they step down, it's always like, oh, I want someone who is better, who is, who can, who can help the community more um, thrive. And it's, it's always been that place of 
what can we do to improve this more than what we currently have? Yeah. Um, and even right. though we're volunteers, we always think, you know, what can what can we do to make it better? And one of those ways are I step down and we bring in new talent. Mm -hmm. Or one of the other ways is yeah. as I'm stepping down. <laughs> Bye, everyone. <laughs> That's, now I go and I shall go. Um, someone else want to come and pick up my job? Goodness. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, no, but like the important thing is that we, even the process of saying no is also a place of we want something better for the community, right? And that says a lot about how Teklahoma became such a good place because even the people who are tired are saying, what can we do to continue to make this community better? Yeah, yeah. So right. why can we not get better? Like we have so many good people who's wanting us to get better, right? And I think it's something that community kind of yearned for and made yeah. it happen themselves. Um, saw this need to connect uh, people uh, across industries, across you know backgrounds and the, the different uh, you know, diverse backgrounds that people have, um, and create community. I think the take a home step in and it kind of created that, filled in that need. And I think that needs to always uh, remain, uh, which is to you know, have community and, and want to be part of something bigger. Um, Speaking of that, one of the cool things that we did do is we did the survey, right? Mm -hmm. um, like two two years ago, was it two years ago now? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. All the, the, yeah. So like one of the ways that I think as an organization you can be better is by doing kind of a survey, um, like a mass survey or uh, more like a long, you know, personal surveys or whatnot, and trying to see what do they think we are doing good on so we can continue to do that and trying to see what we're not doing as well on to improve that if it needs to get improved. Um, you know, even even though we do work with a lot of volunteers, it's not representative of everyone. So we try to give the, everyone an opportunity to help us be better by sharing out surveys. Yeah, because that's kind of the secret to sales is you don't force your product upon people. You ask them what their needs are and figure out how to, how, to feed, how to meet their needs. Something else that I thought of as Alex was talking is that also I think we I feel like we are good at also identifying people who are talented and who have something to offer and lifting them up and giving them an opportunity to shine. And I think that also helps quite a bit too. This is very- It sounds like there's um, also just a environment that always welcomes growth and welcomes new ideas. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, yeah. family. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, for a clarification for a few people, um, Code for Tulsa is the brigade that's part of Teklahoma. So Code for Tulsa is a user group that is part of Teklahoma and also part of Code for America. Um, just for clarifying for those uh, in the chat. Um, there was a question. Um, I lead a brigade in a small mid-sized city and we're about two years old. I'm in awe of the amazing job the Tulsa Brigade has done in growing its network, building resources, gaining maturity with volunteer leadership, and doing great community work. What advice would you give to a brigade that is much earlier in its growth process? Slow and steady wins the race. Be patient. <laughs> Um, baby steps. Find a recruiter to bring you free pizza when you need. Yeah, yeah, that's nice. Um, <laughs> Thank you, Tech Systems. <laughs> <laughs> um, you you are a, a developing organization. So what what's the biggest like? There's a lot of people who's looking for you. You don't realize it yet, but there's a lot of people who are looking for you. Um, so right now it may feel like you're small and. It may dwindle or go away anytime soon, but actually, like, if you just continue what you're doing, the people will follow. Like, if you're passionate about what you're doing, people will follow. So don't get anxious over that. Um, try to find a place where they're willing to fund you or sponsor you for things. Um, like, we say it as a joke, but having, like, free food is actually really good motivators for shy people to come out and network, right? Um, surprisingly, even though we're supposed to be making enough jobs to feed ourselves, right? Um, but like having someone to like sponsor shirts, right? Goodie bags or anything like that gives people a memorabilia that you did something good is actually a really good positive reinforcement to come back and continue doing. Um, if you are 
thankful to your volunteers and community, they will be thankful back to you and they're likely to come back because it's a really good feeling to have. Um, but the most important thing is people need you. Like, whether you believe it or not, like a lot of people are looking for you. So believe in yourself and keep going at it. Yeah, and as I say, work on your outreach. Um, having started Code for Muskogee, which unfortunately now is has fizzled out because everybody moved to Tulsa because Tulsa's that great. Um, but we had for a while, and if I had to given up on it, honestly, um, we'd have 20 people who would come within a year. Um, but I would make sure to reach out. I would post things at the library. I would reach out and send emails to the local uh, high schools and colleges. I would figure out um, which companies had IT departments and send information to them. And I would just market as much as I could what we were doing and put stuff up in coffee shops, hold meetups in coffee shops. And then, of course, have everything posted up on Meetup as well. Yeah, the other thing to that is like, make sure that the information is readily accessible and available, right? Like, I also think a lot about someone that I, like, look up to who always says leave the code the better state when you last touched it. So leave the organization in a better state. And one of the ways you can do that is having information be readily accessible so that even if you do have a gap because you decide to take a step back, someone else can see what you wrote and pick it up from there, right? That's um, nice. So like having good documentation is having information be available and accessible will really help you continue the organization's growth. Um, it'll also make you more easily foundable, right? I personally would also suggest adding uh, organizations, all of your um, documentation should be in one location too. Um, I think that really assists w so that anyone who's jumping in is able to kind of see uh, everything in one glance. Um, there's a question about how to write good documentation. <laughs> well, if it's procedural, you, you write it and then you follow it step by step and make sure that it actually works. It works. That's how I always that's do it. A, I, I have a technical writing background and that's exactly what I do, is I write it all out as I'm doing it. And then I, will give, I let some, a little bit of time pass and I go back and try to follow it again and catch my errors. And I'll do that two or three times until it's, it's good. And then look at it as a living document. Yeah. That yeah. every single time that you are gonna go in and do something, there's probably going to be changes because things are always evolving and always changing and nothing is ever set in stone. So there's no such thing as perfect documentation. Let's yes. start there. Um, yes. So let's not try to force yourself into like, I need to make this document perfect. Um, like always go back and revisit it. If you can try to get people to read it, like don't, don't be the tester of your proofreading or your documentation. Yes. Like try to get someone else yes. who is new to this domain, like ask questions. Cause sometimes like, especially being in a domain for a long time, you forget this is like an inside knowledge and not a, everybody knows this kind of thing. And getting a new, like, that's actually another way you can use new volunteers is like, have them use your documents, ask you a question, and then improve your documents. Yeah, and that's not just code documentation, but like Everything. organizational documentation yeah. as well. Um, so, uh, you know, we mentioned earlier that we do have attendees for our conferences and some of our user groups that are not in the state or not in the country even. Um, how do we, uh, do we plan on continuing some of our remote meetups even going into post-pandemic world, hopefully, eventually someday? <laughs> um, we are, yes, we're trying. we are trying. Uh, so we, we are extremely lucky here in Tulsa to have two amazing locations. Right now we're in Hol Holberton School. Um, and surprisingly enough, they're moving their headquarters from San Francisco to Tulsa because they're so impressed with Tulsa. There's a theme of the conversation, which is this. <laughs> Move to Tulsa. No, no, no. no. <laughs> Tulsa, we're no. Get back to no, no, no. We also yeah. are in Oklahoma City. Right. Right. So we're in is, all um, over Oklahoma. Just yeah, throwing that out there. <laughs> but we also have... Oh, yeah. Yeah. But we also have 36 degrees north, and both of these locations are working on their tech to make it easier for us to be able to do hybrid events to where we have a dedicated screen and computer that shows everything virtually. And then we can also have a live audience. Um, if you have questions on how to specifically do that, 
uh, reach out to us on the Code for Tulsa channel and we can give you some steps on that as we're figuring it out. But it is something that we're figuring out. Um, trying to do it is extremely difficult. And so I honestly, I've dropped a lot of balls this year trying to keep virtual and in-person going and I just haven't been able to do it. But we are in the process of working on setting up all the technology to do that. And I do feel like we're going to like, we do have some examples of that that do work when we can get the technology to cooperate. So, <laughs> so in is short, anybody, yeah. uh, oh. is anybody hibernating in Oklahoma City? Um, mostly, actually. Yeah. Yeah. Good. Yeah. Well, because, uh, oh, go ahead, Alex. Oh, you guys, <laughs> I have met a few times at Fast Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, in person. So, but nice. mostly uh, online. Yeah. Yeah. I think someone in one of our channels, I think it was a Do It Yourself Electronics channel, yeah. was talking about creating a kit. Uh, mm -hmm. For streaming yeah. with Raspberry Pi, I'm not sure where that is at the moment, but uh, I looked at some of the diagrams and it looked really impressive, and it was somewhat affordable. So, one of the things I was thinking too, we wanted to keep uh, hybrid going, is if we could find um, cheap projectors, mm -hmm. that'd be another way to um, be able to maintain both in person and online. Yeah. So I think we are forgetting the most important people who's making hybrid work mm -hmm. is thank you, Dozy, Dozy. Yeah. <laughs> yes, Dozy and Ryan. Um, Ryan. Thank you. Um, so like the, the way we can make the hybrid working is because we've already had the streaming yeah. um, committee in place. Yes, right? we've been streaming for So we've been streaming content for a while. The hybrid, is a, yeah, the hybrid is a different thing because you're having to interact with the online space and a physical space at the same time. And that's why we're doing a lot of learnings. Um, Techlahoma is also looking at ways to help other people do this. So if you're interested, you should contact Techlahoma. Um, but I think the answer is yes, because we've realized that, you know, having Tulsa and Oklahoma City as a hot spot for a physical location isn't enough, right? You lose out on amazing people in Muskogee. You yeah. lose out on amazing, amazing people in other places who can join. And in fact, you know, when we decided to go hybrid or completely virtual during the pandemic, we've had a lot of people outside of Oklahoma join us. Yeah, we had a lot of, there was a lot of Code for America people uh, who are brigadeless because they're in rural areas who started joining the Code for Tulsa virtual meetups and learned about Techlahoma and started joining other virtual events. So it's been, it's been amazing. Yeah. So if you're considering hybrid, please do it. We will try to continue to do hybrid. We'll tell you how it goes. Yeah. We'll talk with you about it. <laughs> All right. Um... Any last final thoughts? If we can just start with Alex and work our way down um, to close out the hour. Sure. Um, yeah. If 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 you ever have a need to contribute to to the place that you live and um, share knowledge, um, find an organization like Tacoma. Uh, they're out there. Uh, there's other like-minded people. You just have to uh, reach out and find them. Um, cool. Uh, I guess I don't really have a final thought. Just something that I'm going stream of thoughts. I, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Not of, they're just stream of consciousness. Anyway, uh, something that I thought of um, earlier in the conversation that I didn't get to mention was that when you're dealing with volunteers, it's just really important to be kind. Like if somebody drops the ball and doesn't do something that they said they were going to do, it's very easy for you to be like, oh, oh man, I can't believe they did that. I'm so angry because now I have to do more work. But you really have to keep yourself from doing that because they're going to know. They're going to tell that you're pissed at them. Like, <laughs> you just have to remember everyone's a volunteer and that it's okay. So. It's fine. It'll be fine. It's all fine. Yeah. <laughs> Um, mine's actually from Luke. Hey, Luke, if you're listening. <laughs> um, actually, so mine would be that, like, you being there and doing something means something, right? So, like, you know, if you're thinking of doing something, you don't have to think about what a big impact it will make. Like, you having had done something will already make this a better place and a space. So, you know, like, thank yourself a little more and congratulate yourself, congratulate yourself a little more because you making an effort on doing something has already made this place a better place. So keep doing you. And I was going to say, always be flexible and fluid. I, I can definitely be a control freak at times and be upset when things aren't going just right. Um, but learning to be forgiving of myself, be forgiving of others, realize that nothing is ever completely perfect. Um, allowing for mistakes, allowing for change, 
trying to continually work on that process um, is a tremendous help. All right. I appreciate you all attending. I would like to do a couple of closeout announcements about Techlahoma before I take my Techlahoma hat off. Um, <laughs> so first thing, uh, yes, these lovely panelists are all board members um, and they do happen to take place, live in Tulsa. Oh, and Seon's rocking the Techlahoma mask. Um, but we do also have Oklahoma City. We have Enid. We have Muskogee. We are all over the state of Oklahoma. We are not just in Tulsa, even though we did give some Tulsa shout outs. Um, I also want to shout out um, teclahoma.org. There's tons of free content there. You can contact me there um, about anything that you want to hear more of. Um, you can also join our Slack group and you can meet with these lovely panelists uh, and chat with them and ask them any questions as I do see there were some questions that weren't able to be answered uh, in the time that we had today. Um, Techlahoma.org. Uh, Techlahoma.org. Um, Techlahoma oh, yeah. The Techlahoma Slack is techlahoma.slack.com um, and you can head there. There's also you can get swag from being part of Techlahoma, um, like how we talked about always getting uh, swag. Um, and um, if you have any questions whatsoever about Techlahoma, feel free to reach out to me. Um, I am also running the Brigade Congress event today, so I am running around Gather Town. Um, Diana, I think, is also running around Gather Town. Um, so feel free to talk to any of us. Um, I will now put on my Brigade Congress hat. Um, so for Brigade Congress, the next event is occurring in just a few minutes at 2.30 Central Standard Time. That is in 18 minutes, and it's going to be Failure, a Code for America success story. What do we do when we fail? Um, so that's sure to be an interesting panel. Also, um, definitely check out the unconferences hosted by Mohith. If you have any questions, um, make sure to ask someone with an asterisk at the beginning of their name and they'll be able to assist you. I hope you had a great time at this panel and have a great rest of the day. Thanks everyone. Bye everybody. Bye. Bye.